Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Super Kyle Ken Podcast. I'm your host as always, John 12 and I'm here to give you all things Dragon Ball and of course the occasional anime. Now of course uh, there's a lot of things to talk about that I personally have been really interested in to talk about. But first off, I just wanted to discuss some personal updates with the channel, my YouTube channel. Uh, first off, as I mentioned in my uh, the, the latest episode of the Josh 12 Effect podcast, that I will be leaving uh, my hometown. I'll be going back on vacation once again, so I will not be, you know, pretty much making videos as currently as I have been doing over the course of the last couple of weeks. But, um... I will be c trying to keep up to date with my channel as much as possible, but I will be going on vacation. I'll be going to Chicago on August 27th, and I won't be returning back home until September of the uh, 6th of September. So that's pretty much my schedule. And also, I will uh, be transitioning in between um, Chicago and Florida, I will also be going to Las Vegas, which is pretty interesting. I really, I don't know where the idea came where, like, it was a good idea to just, like, transition to Las Vegas after going to Chicago. I don't know whose idea that was, but, um, yeah, I'm apparently going to Las Vegas. I'm not really psyched about that. No offense to people who live in Las Vegas, because I know that there's a tons of fucking people who live in Las Vegas and, and who are cool, like, uh, the Ishmahawk dudes. Like, those fucking guys who uh, make the Nightwing stuff and all that other awesome DC uh, comic book superhero stuff on YouTube. They're really awesome. And they live in Las Vegas. But, um, yeah, I have, like, zero interest to ever go to Las Vegas. I don't really see a point in going there unless, like, either you want to get really drunk at the strip or you want to just be a baller and just waste a shit ton of money on casinos and hookers. Or you're there, I guess, on a honeymoon or something. I don't know. Um, I, I personally not really psyched about it. I mostly say that based on the fact that um, that obviously uh, I I have an idea of what's gonna go down, but um, I, I'm I, I I just don't feel like it's there's a purpose of me going over there, especially seeing as how I have to go there with a whole bunch of old people. It's like ugh, like I would rather go with people my own age for this kind of shit. And plus, on top of that, I want to do if I ever did go to Las Vegas. For any kind of purpose, it would go there for the sole purpose to impregnate my wife to one day have a son, which is the same thing my dad did when he went to Las Vegas. So yeah, that like that's the origins of John Chapter Twelve right there in front of you. I I know you didn't need it, but that's a pet. That's basically what happened. My dad took my wife to Las Vegas. Um, uh, took talk, took my wife. What am I, an idiot? I can't even talk right anymore. Took my mother to Las Vegas back in the days. Of course, they were there on their honeymoon. Shit went down, and then you know came back home. And then there's there's a me, as as the great Paul Costa would say, a me. So that's pretty much the gist of the origins of John Chapter Twelve. However, I really have no purpose going to Las Vegas, and it's it's whatever. But um, I am kind of psyched to go to Chicago, mostly because I just want to go back to uh, Graham Cracker's comic book store because. Fuck, it's such a great, amazing comic book store. If you remember, I praised them in the the last podcast of the uh, John 12 effect um, because it's just a great comic book store. I'm just saying, if you live in Illinois or if you live in Chicago and you can make tr like a two-hour trip or something, just go to Graham Cracker's comic book store. It's so fucking awesome. It's a great fucking comic book store. I know there's actual comic book stores in the city. Which I've gone to, but they're kind of crappy in comparison. Like I, 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 like my cousin used to live under a comic book store, so like every time I would, uh, like visit her, I would just like you know fucking leave the upstairs and go downstairs to the, to the comic book store and just stay there and just read comics, and talk to the dude about shit that he was selling and not selling. So that's essentially what I did. But um, I'm just saying they fail. In, they're great, but they fail in comparison to Graham Cracker's comics. They're so fucking good. If you want some solid fucking quality sh like shit from comic book genres and you want like a like a fucking collage of fucking amazing content, you need to go to Graham Crackers Comics. I I really love their fucking stuff. I love their store. If I ever was to live in Illinois, which I don't really want to do, but if I did, I would specifically live on the same street as that store, for the sole purpose of living in that fucking store, I would just do that all day, because it's so fucking good, but however, 
that's uh, just a brief little thing. I just wanted to update. So essentially, uh, I just wanted to do another Super Kyle Ken podcast before I went on vacation. I, I know I did one already, so I kind of didn't necessarily need to do another one. But um, I just there's been so much shit that's been going down that I just wanted to talk about before I left. So that's essentially what. Uh, I wanted to do, but however, it's just it's just interesting that I'm gonna be going to Chicago and Las Vegas. Not really a big fan of either places because I'm just more of a, a homesteader kind of dude. But um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I've never been to Las Vegas, so let's see how that goes. I mean, I've been to Nevada, um, but I've just never been to the actual Strip of Las Vegas. So we're we're gonna see how that goes down. Hopefully, it's good. If it's not good, then obviously I'll never go back again. Um, unless I'm on my honeymoon, because, you know, those are cliche places to go. You go on very cliche places when you get married, which is either Hawaii, uh, Hawaii, or fucking Las Vegas, or if you're, like, a real baller, you just go, like, across the world, you know, full, full on fucking, you know, worldwide fucking, uh, vacation type shit, that would be kind of interesting, which I also have zero interest to do, because, once again, I'm not a big traveler, but however, we're not here to talk about my personal life, that's the John Stra 12th uh, Effect uh, podcast, we're here to talk all things Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball, and anime, uh, originally I was gonna make this more of a Naruto-centric uh, kind of episode, because, uh, I forgot to mention this in the last episode, essentially, um, uh, for those of you who don't know, Lionsgate, are in the process with uh, association with uh, Avi Arad's production company to produce and create a live action adaption of the Naruto manga, which is pretty interesting. Um, I really originally when I heard it, I was like, "Wow, that's kind of cool." I mean, it's it's nice to at least see that someone's trying to attempt to make another live action adaption to an anime. Uh, a lot of hardcore fans were kind of like doomed. Uh, they kind of felt like there was no, you know, point to this. For me, I like the idea of live action animes because I, I feel like the, the the worst thing about the reasoning behind anime not blowing up as much as it should has a lot to do with either the fan bases not adjusting to the future or the creators and, and property holders not really wanting to expand their genre. And I get it, anime and manga is, even to this today's standards, is like a, a niche market that a lot of people aren't fully adjusted to, especially uh, worldwide in, in, in uh, that kind of stance. But um, we're in the superhero genre, man. I mean, like, the United States, over the course of the last decade, has proven that we're all about the superhero genre. We fucking are blowing up. I mean, like, next year... We're going to get seven, seven comic book superhero movies. Seven. It usually takes seven years in between fucking a superhero movie. But no, we're getting all seven in one year. We're getting freaking, um, we're getting freaking BVS, Civil War, Deadpool, Suicide Squad, Doctor Strange. We're just getting so many fucking awesome movies and I can't wait to see all of them. Um, but why can't the anime genre do the same? Why can't we get a good studio with good creative filmmakers, with great writers, with an amazing cast and producers to just make a live action adaption to an anime and put the love and passion into it the same way, uh, let's say, like a Kevin Feige does at a Marvel. You know, like, it just, it just baffles me to this day that we can't do that. Now, granted, they tried to do that uh, a decade ago. You know, they tried to do that a decade ago, and I understand that, but movies back then, even for superhero movies, weren't really perfected as they are now, and they're, they're still in a process of perfection. I think Marvel has definitely set a template for how to do comic book movies, and DC and Warner Brothers are starting to do their own universe, not to mention we have various other kind of franchises blowing up uh, in the midst of this superhero genre um, explosion. So it's pretty cool to see that, but back in the day, it wasn't really like that. It was pretty much just a shot in the dark to like, okay, we have this property, we want to make this a movie, uh, how do we do it? We don't know. Let's just try to make it. We have a time slot. We have, uh, you know, we have this specific budget. Let's just do it. Throw it out there. Let's see how the audiences react. Uh, for anime movies, it did not go that that well. I mean, like majority of all anime movies back in the day, like a good five, less than ten years ago, did terribly. They were not good. 
But I think now that we're in this development of this golden age of superhero genre, I think that we are in a stance where we can actually make these good movies. I think we can actually, you know, big studio Hollywood can fucking have the, you know, the, the sense to be like, okay, we can fucking tr trust in this property, put the love, the compassion, the justice into developing the story. I think they have that kind of sense. Now, granted, anybody can make the argument. It's like, well, anime is not perfected to be a created and adapted into live action format and then there's the other complainers who are like you know like not all comic book movies are good look at fat four stick you freaking numbskull it's like granted yeah fantastic four this year bombed it was like the big major comic book flop superhero movie flop of the year however there was a lot of fucking superhero content over the course of this year and they all fucking dominated you know they fucking dominated this year so, it's just, like, one movie out of, like, a dozen? That's pretty good. Like, back in the day, it would have been, like, all of them just sh were shit, and except for, like, one. So now, it's, like, a dozen combo movies are amazing, do good money, have amazing uh, critical reception, but then there's just that little one movie that kind of flops. So, I don't really think that's a good argument to make, in my personal opinion. So, uh, for me, I'm an optimistic when it comes to live-action anime. I'm a very generous and you know relatively easy optimistic so i want to see this naruto movie be made is it going to be good i don't know because there's a lot of things that that really don't vibe well with the property of how it's being developed number one it's at lionsgate i don't i'm not the biggest fan of lionsgate i'm not really big on their movies i know they have the hunger games franchise and they're fucking blown up with that and i know now they're developing uh currently power rangers and they're doing that they're trying to make that a franchise i know that they're trying to blow up but lionsgate is just not on the same level as like you know disney or warner brothers or universal who had an amazing reception over this year universal had so much cash in the bank i just don't know if lionsgate could do the same uh, with Naruto, I mean, shit, it, it would be kind of very difficult to see if they can actually, I mean, like, I think we have to see how Power Rangers does, which is very, very wacky, Japanese-y kind of, uh, anime-esque kind of property, and then we'll see how we transition to Naruto, I think we have to just wait until see, uh, how Power Rangers does, that's just my personal opinion, however, there's other things that don't vibe well with me. Avi Arad. Avi Arad, I'm not the biggest fan of. He kind of just destro currently destroyed the Spider-Man franchise. So I don't know if he can really do justice to uh, Naruto or the anime genre. Then again, he's also developing like a ton of other fucking movies. Not to mention, he's also doing Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, Ghost in the Shell is another anime property that's being developed by Hollywood Studios that Avi Arad is actually producing the same way he's doing Naruto. So I don't know how he's going to balance all these things. And then you went, uh, which is another story. I've already talked, uh, gave my pe gave my piece on Ghost in the Shell. Uh, once again, pretty optimistic. I'm just saying, I know a lot of people are like, oh, Scarlett Johansson, terrible choice. Terrible choice. Ugh. I like her. I like her. She fucking... She's one of the highest paid actresses of the year. Of the, She was named next to like Jennifer Lawrence and other fucking amazing actresses as the highest paid best actresses of the year. So hold your fucking horses, fanboys. I think she'll fucking do good. And plus, she's a fucking amazing looking actress. And she fucking kills it. And she's fucking an action hero now. She's a legitimate action hero. I mean, like, if you've not seen a Marvel movie and you've not, you know, if... if You've seen any of her in it, and you were like, I don't know, Marvel sucks, Black Widow, don't do it for me. I can't help you. Go over there. I can't help you. Anyways, back to the thing that another thing that doesn't really vibe with me that, with the Naruto project is um is uh freaking um the the director. I I forget his his name, but it's just it it just he doesn't really have a background that really supports that he can do this. And I don't know if there's a studio like Lionsgate or a production company and producer like Avi Arad who's going to be able to make this guy fucking the perfect choice, directing choice of this movie. I don't freaking know. And I mostly say that on the fact that Marvel has had a good 
like track record at getting like pretty obscure obscure directors and making them awesome box office hit directors. You know, like look at the Russo brothers. They fucking were those community guys and that show is like I know a lot of people love it and all, but I just was like, what the fuck is this nonsense? And then they fucking blow the fucking doors down with Winter Soldier, which is hands down one of my favorite Marvel movies. And then you have James Gunn, who I like James Gunn because of his indie work and his, you know, all that other various stuff he worked on and his, you know, he he was a very very, you know, he was a fucking accomplished indie director and shit, but um, at the end of the day, he never really did anything that was up to the level of what Guardians was, and that movie is like, hands down, one of the top 10 greatest comic book movies of all time. So I really don't know, it's, it's, but they have a lot of things, they got Disney backing them, they got Kevin Feige backing them, they got the fucking budget, they got the fucking, they have this amazing backing that just supports them and supports their vision and has their own vision because they have a universe. Lionsgate doesn't technically have that right now. They only have Hunger Games. Hunger Games is killing them. Uh, well, not killing them, but killing it, rather. Uh, it's just... I don't know what kind of a future, uh, technically, uh, that freaking... The Naruto movie could have, technically. I don't really know... If Naruto will be successful. Then again, I don't even know if if Naruto could ever happen. Because look at Akita. Akita was a movie that um that's supposed to be out by now. It was a fucking... It's been in years and years of development. This is a movie that was supposed to come out by now. You know, Leo DiCaprio was supposed to produce it. You know, you they had all these amazing actors attached to it. Like fucking... Um, they just... They had, like, Gary Oldman, they just, they had so many people backing this movie, and it just still hasn't been made, it's in development hell, so, that's another thing that you need to consider, is that movies like Naruto, that are in the process of being produced with li um, in live action format, may or may not happen, and just might just have the rights be in limbo, and the development will just be in hell, that's it. So, at the end of the day, it's kind of like a lose-lose for everybody. It's like, the fans don't get a Naruto live-action movie. The producers waste a shit ton of money just developing a piece of shit. And everybody loses. You know, and all the really bitchy kind of, you know, anime fans who I really don't like or want to associate myself with. Or just like, eh... It's better that way. Anime needs to stay anime forever. It's like, how do you ever expect anime to grow and become the next big gigantic thing if it's just going to continuously be this niche pocket? Like, I'm just saying, like, I don't want to bash anybody, and I know it kind of sounds like I am, but I'm not. I'm not trying to bash anybody, any sort of fan base, and I'm not trying to bash any sort of fan person. Um, but I'm just saying, like, Anime and manga can't be punk rock forever. It can't. It needs a fucking blow up. It needs to be something more than just a punk rock niche market. It can't fucking do that. It needs to blow up. It needs to become a franchise. It needs to, we're not in and not in the Hollywood kind of sense, but in a more of like a worldwide scope kind of sense. Where it's just like, it can't just be a niche market over here in the US and just an exploding, you know, uh, mecca over Japan. It can't just be that no more. It needs to be a worldwide scope of thing, you know, so let's see what happens overall. Naruto the movie, I'm optimistic about it. Will it actually happen? That's a bigger question. I'm 50-50 on it. And the people who are developing it, I'm not a big fan of. Lionsgate, not big fan of that um, distribution company. Um, I mean, yeah, they have Hunger Games, but at the same time, I'm not even a Hunger Games fan. Um, I guess we have to wait and see how Power Rangers does, and then we'll see how Naruto does. Um, on top of that, uh, it's just we just have to wait and see. I, I want to see this movie. I want it to be made. I want there to ha be an existing Naruto movie. And if it's good, then we can fucking finally cheer and fucking put our arms in the air and fucking celebrate that... Finally, there's a live-action anime movie that was done, produced, developed here in the U.S. and was a major success. Critics liked it. Fans loved it. It made good money. 
it's spawning a sequel and maybe another movement of like other anime movies where other properties can finally be made and go into development. Who the fu- who the who the hell knows? I really don't. I'm not an inside man. I'm just a freaking fanboy, you know, here in, you know, South United States who has no idea what he's talking about talking on a podcast. So I really don't know, but I really would like to see one day anime be as big as superhero comic books are today. Like we're in the golden age of comic book movies, but the anime genre is like in its I want to say like in its bronze age. Like that that's that the anime genre is like in the bronze age. You know, it's not really silver, it's definitely not gold. It's like in bronze. It's just it's just hanging around there. It's it's important and it's cool, but it's just over there and it's whatever. That's that's what anime genre is today in comparison to comic books. It's just a bronze age. We're in the bronze age of the anime genre. I don't know if anybody's actually titled it that. I'm um, I guess I'll be the person who did that shit, but um that's just my personal opinion. No one has to share it. That's the point of this podcast. It's a subjective opinion, so you don't have to really agree with me because I know there are hardcore purists out there who are like, anime and manga should always stay in Japan. It should always be developed and produced by Japanese uh, companies and must always be an anime and manga. It can never be live action and used with white actors and done in America or whatever. Never. I'm not a believer in that. I don't think that's really a discussion that's valid, a point that's valid, but um, I respect it. I just don't think it's you know really... A valid point. But anyways, moving off of that, uh, some other interesting things I want to discuss Dragon Ball Z-wise, now that we're done with the Naruto project. Uh, first off, Resurrection F finished its limited live uh, live action, limited theatrical release over here in the States and other English-speaking countries. Fucking awesome. I loved the English dub of this movie. Now, granted, if you go back and listen to my other Super Kyle Ken podcast, you would know that... I did not go and see the day it came out, and I was kind of pissed about it, and I ranted a little bit about it, and I was like, oh, I'm never going. Well, I finally got to see the English dub of Resurrection F, oh, and it was phenomenal. I love this movie. Resurrection F is so freaking good. I love it. It's so it's it's so funny, and I, I love the English translation, because I know there's a lot of freaking people out there who despise the uh not resurrection but um the english dub funimation dub of dragon ball z and i just don't understand them i really don't like how can you go into this movie and not watch the english dub and not fucking laugh your ass off on how amazing and entertaining this was it was such a good dub like this was a great dub. i love this like i watched the japanese version and i was like yeah, that's a good movie. I liked it. It was a pretty good movie. I saw it with the English dub, and it's an entirely new movie. It's like rewatching it for the first time with an entirely new cat, which it basically is. I don't know why he said it that way. Idiot. But whatever. It's an entirely new movie. It's a better movie. I know that might sound fucked up because, you know, the Japanese, they're the, origina- the originators. They made this shit, and they dominated with this shit, and I'm, and I'm not... Uh, disclaiming that, and I'm not discounting that, they fucking dominated, and they made a lot of money, and it's very successful, and I love that, I love the fact that this movie was so successful, not only over there, but over here too, it, it made a fucking, a lot of money over here in the box office, and that's fucking amazing, that's a feat that no other anime movie, or uh, over here in the states has really done, uh, I mean, like, there are others, but, you know, this one really dominated, and that's fucking great. But the English dub was so freaking good. It was so great. Say what you will about the English dub. I know there's a lot of purists out there, like, the really annoying fuckers, who I freaking hate. No offense. <laughs> I know that sounds fucked up, but, I mean, like, I just hate, I just hate it when those people talk to me. Like, every time I make a DBZ video and I, like, reference, like, the Funimation dub, uh, whenever they said something on that dub, and, like, one of those purists come out at me and start attacking me, they're like, um, the Funimation dub's not canon. The Japanese dub is the only one you should consider because it's original. Uh, duh. It's like, shut the fuck up. Who cares which one's better? You know, like, who cares 
which one's more appropriate or which one's canon? Like that word gets tossed around so much where people are like, it's like the Bible. Fuck canon. Who gives a shit? Like, granted, there are things that are not canon. That There are things that are absolutely manga canon. There are things that are anime canon and then there's movie canon. Who gives a shit anymore? If there's anything we've learned from like Dragon Ball Super 2, Battle of Gods, and Resurrection F, that it doesn't even matter anymore. Dragon Ball Super is anime canon. Battle of Gods and Resurrection F is like a fusion of manga canon and anime canon. So, who really gives a damn anymore in this day and age of the current Dragon Ball Z series? Who fucking cares? I, I'm just saying, like, I, I get so many comments from those purists who are like, like, oh, and it's just annoying, like... It's, it's, uh, you know, it's just like, oh, the manga is the only thing you should like, the anime destroyed the manga. It's like, shut the fuck up. Shut up. You have no point. And I don't even like you. And I don't want to talk to you. Stop talking to me. So annoying. I'm just saying, people, it's like, I'm not trying to bash my own fan base. Like, I'm a hardcore Dragon Ball Z fan. I like it all. I like the specials. I like, I like the shitty specials. I like the movies. I like the shitty movies. I like the sh the TV. Sh I like the cartoon anime series. I, I I even like GT, and that's a piece of shit. You know, it's like the Power Rangers Turbo, a fucking Dragon Ball Z series. And then I I like the manga. The manga is awesome, amazing artwork. You know, amazing illustrations and story from Toriyama. Amazing, awesome. So why do I have to like? And and the dubs are awesome, like. Like, uh, Funimation versus Japanese dub, it's like a video topic I actually wanted to make, but, like, I think it's just more appropriate to do it over here in the podcast. It's just, like, who gives a fuck? Like, if you're from a certain part of the world, why do you have to associate yourself with a dub that you don't understand? You know, like, there's various dubs for worldwide. Like, you have the Spanish dub, you have the German dub. You have the English dub, which is the Funimation dub. You have the Japanese original dub. You have all these various dubs. Are you saying that those dubs, for those specific countries who only speak that specific language and don't understand any others, are less valid than the Japanese just because they're the Japanese? Fuck you. You don't make any sense. Stop talking. It's just annoying. I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm ranting here. It's just really fucking annoying. It's just like... Why does it matter anymore? It just—it doesn't even matter anymore. It's all dry, it, Dragon Ball Z. We're all just one big family. It's just one gigantic family. Why do you have to like discount one for the other? You know, I live in the United States. I've always lived in the United States, and I always will live in the United States. Why should I listen to another dub that I fully do not comprehend, and it doesn't really affect me? I'm not discounting it. I'm not bashing it. It's over there. It's for them. And that's awesome. More Dragon Ball Z for the world. Great. But the Funimation dub is what I grew up with. I love it. And I love the the, the, the dub. Uh, the Japanese original dub. I love their dub as well. It's awesome. It's great to listen to. Especially when you have both versions. So you kind of like compare the two. And you're like, oh, it's cool how they changed that. And they changed that. But like, I don't know why you have to do this compare. Like all these really, you know, really hardcore, like douchebag purists. Who always have to like compare the two and just say like, oh, that one sucks. It's terrible. They did a terrible job. Fuck them. It's like, fuck you. <clears throat> so I don't know. It's, it's, it's really stupid freaking idiots out there who do this. And you can't really stop them all. You can only just like tell them to shut the fuck up. And hopefully they do. That's all you can really do. But that being said post my rant, I know, I know, um, I know I went a little crazy there, but, um, I'm just saying, like, that's just something that's been bothering me a lot ever since Resurrection F came out, and, like, we were doing this, like, I was, like, having these weird comments, like, that fucking dude, uh, what's his face, God, Emperor, YouTube, whatever, that fucking, the dude who has Sakura as his thumbnail, like, he just, like, like, he has, like, this desire to, like, comment on all my videos and, like, discount them all. It's like, what the fuck is your point, dude? Like, do I have to share your opinion? I don't really think so. And plus, your opinion doesn't even matter because it doesn't make any sense. And it's invalid. So, I don't know. It's just those really hardcore purists out there. I'm not trying to bash you. 
even though it sounds like I am, I, I'm not. I'm just saying, like, it's just really annoying when you just talk. I'm just saying. I'm, I have to be truthful. It's my podcast. I have to be truthful. When you talk, I get annoyed, and I want to hurt someone, specifically you. That's all I'm going to say. Anyways, back to Resurrection F, which is the more important topic. Funimation dubbed killed it. They fucking destroyed. I loved uh, Christopher Sabat's uh, Vegeta performance. Uh, I wasn't the biggest fan of his performance in Battle of Gods, um, like I, like a lot of us were. We thought that Christopher Sabat was like phoning it in, but I think he did an amazing job with this movie. I mean, like he had like the best lines in this movie. Like Vegeta, uh, Christopher Sabat's Vegeta uh, performance had like the best lines. Like that one line when he's like, "Ah, oh, shut your face!" Like I thought that was just hysterical. Like, and I also liked uh, when he's like, "Oh, jeez!" And it's like I was. He just had the best lines. It was pretty cool. Um. Uh, Sean Chemo's Goku always on point, really awesome. I thought it was kind of weird how goofy he made Goku in this movie, uh, because usually Goku is a goofy character, but I felt like Sean Chemo like went like all the way with his goofiness with his performance. I thought that was kind of odd. Still good, but kind of odd. Um, Chris Aries as Frieza, fucking awesome. Like I I'm not the biggest hardcore Kai fan. Although I appreciate it for what it is, I'm not the biggest fan. But the one good thing they did that they accomplished with it was redubbing Frieza. I love the original voice actress for Frieza. I personally wish they brought her back for this movie. I thought she would have she would have killed it, and it would have been so more nostalgic. But Chris Aries was awesome. He fucking killed with this movie. He gave Frieza an entirely new dynamic that wasn't really there before from other dubs, not just. Uh, the, the prior Funimation version. Like, he just gave a new standard for Frieza, which really destroyed and was the best part of Kai, I might add. And he fucking killed it with this movie. I thought he was great. Um, moving off of that, um, all the other actors really were awesome. Specifically, and you knew this was coming, freaking Todd Habercorn. Todd Habercorn was the perfect choice for Jocko the Galactic Patrolman. I fucking loved his performance, and I really thought, like, how is this really gonna go down, because I love the Japanese version, like, the Japanese, like, I don't really, like, laugh at a lot of their jokes in the Japanese version, because I don't really think it translate that, translates that well with an American audience to perfection, as much as they probably hope, but with this movie, the comedy was so much on point in comparison to Battle of Gods, that, like, everything that Jocko did in the Japanese version was so fucking awesome. It was so his hilarious. It was awesome. So I was kind of, like, 50-50 about whether or not he, Todd Habercorn could do it. I mean, Todd Habercorn has killed it in the anime genre. He fucking, pff, fucking voiced so many characters in the anime genre and he has, and he has killed consistently. But Jocko the Galactic Patrolman... And I said this before, he's the best part of this movie. Todd Habakorn destroyed with his performance in this movie. He was so funny. He was so good. I loved his... I like that fucking line. He's like, not Taco, Jocko. It's uh, so fucking good. And it's like, and a, a fish made entirely from gold? It's like, ah, oh, God, his performance is so good. It's so great. I don't know why people are so bitching about like, ah, oh, Funimation sucked. English stuff is terrible. I'm a purist, man. Shut up. It was good. The English dub was so good. It's a better movie because of that dub. I like it more because of that movie. Uh, because of that performance, rather. The performances go a long way with the movie. Uh, and they just killed it. The Funimation dub was awesome. It has its faults. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I, like I, I definitely have to watch it a, f a couple more times. Uh, probably when it comes out on Blu-ray. Um, to really get the full gist of like a like a really good final verdict um to really get the the my final personal thoughts on it but um I, based off what i've seen it kind of has like the same pros and cons of battle of gods like inconsistencies and like weird dialogue that certain characters say which i'll get into later in this uh in this podcast but um overall this movie was awesome i actually uh you know after you know some time has passed since uh the theatrical release i actually might think that this movie might be better than Battle of Gods. I, I, when I did my review, I felt like they were pretty much on par. And even though I still believe that Battle of Gods had a better villain and kind of a better story than Resurrection F, this movie was just so, like, 
I I definitely oh god I I definitely had to see the English dub to really change my mind because that's what this movie this perf- the performances do this fucking so good S- great performances and the English the Funimation English dub did a great job and they they fucking killed and they made a killing with this movie so um it's really awesome for Funimation uh in the future of Funimation going onward fucking great but however, Resurrection F was really awesome. I, I, I reviewed it, if you've not noticed. I, I reviewed it, gave my personal thoughts on it. Um, and the English dub was an amazing performance. It was also really cool to like hear uh, other um, uh, moviegoers react to Dragon Ball Z and the, and the different kind of jokes and, and performances of Dragon Ball Z. So that was also pretty freaking sweet to, to hear uh, and listen to. It was pretty cool. So overall, the experience was awesome. I, I really hope that Toriyama and Toy decide to make another movie specifically because they just been making such a killing that they can just go on forever and well maybe not on forever because obviously you know the time will come where Toriyama will obviously have to pass on um on doing Dragon Ball uh because of his health and obviously more than likely he will have to retire at some point because he is really 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 getting up there in years so it it really depends on what goes on with super i guess that's going to be the future of dragon ball so we'll have to see what happens but overall battle of god uh, battle of god resurrection f solid movie i loved it if you saw it at in theaters and got to witness the english dub like myself and other people i really hope you enjoyed it because it was a phenomenal experience i loved it this movie was so good it was i can't wait to get on blu-ray which Brings up to my other point, um, Battle of Gods, Battle of, God, I keep mixing up the names, Resurrection F is going to be premiering and coming out on Blu-ray in October, yes, the Battle of God, uh, God, I keep saying Battle of God, Resurrection F will be coming out on Blu-ray in October, and of course, uh, we'll have, uh, the standard Blu-ray DVD combo pack version and, of course, they will be coming out with a collector's edition of Resurrection F, which was pretty cool. I don't think uh, Funimation did that for um, uh, freaking Battle of Gods. They didn't really get to do that the same way they did with that movie. They kind of just put out the, the standard version, and that was pretty much it. I mean, maybe they did a collector's edition. I never saw one. I know the Japanese did a collector's edition, like the one with Super Saiyan God Goku on the cover and stuff like that. I know they had that, but um, I don't really recall... Um, Funimation doing one, but however, um, they're doing one for Resurrection F, which is pretty cool. I, I saw the case, I saw the stuff that comes with it, and um, I can pretty much say, as of right now, I would not be picking it up. I, I, I like it, it's pretty cool. I think they could have put more into it, definitely. They could have put much a much more into it, uh, seeing as how, how successful this movie was. However, it's pretty cool. Like, it has ra- great... Um, uh, artistic art book uh, covers to it. Um, the the quality looks really on point. The covers are great. Um, it comes out with these really interesting like postcard uh, poster cards kind of things with the Frieza uh, army thing that they were kind of promoting on Funimation. Like uh, I like those really weird videos they were posting. Like oh join the Frieza crew or whatever the fuck that was. They essentially have postcards dedicated to that so that's pretty cool so if you're a hardcore frieza fan then you're gonna love these postcards so um overall i like the collector's edition i'm not gonna pick it up um it goes for i think for 60 dollars and the standard blu-ray dvd combo will be 30 dollars if i'm must if i'm not mistaken and of course if you pre-order and i guess order an add along another 10 dollars you'll also get with whichever version you get um, you also be getting a Shenron t-shirt, which is pretty cool, which I also kind of find really weird that you have to add $10. Why not just like, if you pre-order, get it for free. I don't know. I guess they just wanted more money. However, I mean like, didn't they get enough with the box office? They made a, sh- a couple million dollars in the box office. I don't know why they had to fucking make us waste more money on t-shirts when we already do that already. However, pretty fucking awesome. Pretty sweet. So yeah, I can't wait till October to pick up the Blu-ray release. Of Resurrection F. I love this movie. It's fucking awesome. Can't wait for another movie. Which I hope they do. I'm just saying like. They don't have to make like dozens of movies. Just make one more. Like make it a trilogy. Like that. That was something that I would really love to see. Like just make it a trilogy. Like after 
Dragon Ball Super Season 1 is done, get started on a third movie. That's, that's like, my personal hopes that I hope they do. Anyways, moving off of that, um, Resurrection F stuff, uh, really liked it, really appreciate it, really awesome. But anyways, uh, seeing as I've been talking far too long, let's get into my last updates that I wanted to discuss, um, which uh, pertain to other YouTubers out there discussing all things Dragon Ball Z. Yes, Robot Underdog um, is at it again, making some more awesome updates about uh, their Dragon Ball Z Light of Hope web series, which, of course, I love the first episode. A lot of people gave me shit for my review, uh, but then again, people, it was a critique, so I had to point out the pros and cons of the episode, but overall, I love loved that episode it was so good and um they made an update like i want to say like a month ago or something and uh i didn't get a chance to talk about this earlier but um overall they discussed that they got the funding and the money to uh, to make episode two and three of their web series and uh they announced the the actor they finally showed him off of to um who's going to be future trunks in, in one of these future episodes and of course they also announced that they're in the process of um, of shooting episode two and three as we speak uh the 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 script is already done for episode two so they're in the process of making it which is pretty awesome i i loved episode two can't wait to see uh what it's i, I loved episode one so i can't wait to see what episode two is all about overall fucking awesome badass move uh badass fucking you know web series fucking great can't wait to see what happens um i i really I really wonder what they have plans to do with this series. Like, is this really going to develop into something else? Like, that's the big question I have because, you know, they they have set out for three episodes. But does that mean that they're going to be doing anything other than just three episodes? Like, are they going to, like, try and make more episodes? And if they do, will they possibly approach like any other kind of sagas in the Dragon Ball Z franchise it'll be kind of cool to see what happens with the future robot underdog but I can't wait to see what happens um also they announced that they're going to be featuring a a character uh that's that's going to be introduced in one of these episodes that an unknown character which is pretty interesting originally I thought it was going to be either Piccolo or Vegeta uh but from what they said that the character that's going to be introduced is not any of the Z-Warriors, and it's not Cell. So, I really have no fucking clue who it is. I thought it was Piccolo or Vegeta, but apparently I was wrong. Uh, maybe it's Frieza. I don't know. Maybe, like, when Future Trunks time travels, he'll meet up with Mecha Frieza, and then they'll fucking slice it, slice, slice that bitch in half. That would be kind of cool, so... Maybe they'll accomplish that. I have no freaking clue. Uh, but, um, I can't wait to see, so, I really hope they fucking put out an episode, um, hopefully before the end of the year, or at least in, you know, early next year, like January or something, I, I have no clue, um, what process they are in, in the developing of episode two, but I really want to see it, I can't wait, and based off looks and what I've seen, I like the actor they got for Future Trunks. I think he fucking looks the part. Granted, it kind of doesn't make any sense that he's white because, for one, the kid actor they got was Liz Asian kid. So I don't know how they worked that out. But um, overall, I guess it just fits better because, you know, in this certain web series that they've created, which I like perfectly, I think it was a great choice uh, for the dynamic between Vegeta and Boma that you have Vegeta be like the Asian character. Uh, oriental wise and then you have Boma who's uh, more of the Caucasian aspects of that kind of dynamic so you have this really interest, um, interesting blend of these characters so it's it's pretty cool but um, it's kind of weird how like Future Trunks gone from like Asian to white in the span of like an episode so we'll have to see what happens but the actor they got looks wise pretty cool I think that it was a pretty decent choice see he has like a very like, he has, like, a very, like, Chris Hemsworthy kind of Thor aspect to him, so I think it's a pretty decent choice. And he, hey, he's a good-looking dude, so I think that's also a pretty good choice, because even though I'm not a superficial kind of dude, and I'm definitely not a superficial fanboy, but let's face it, Future Trunks is hands down the most attractive, good-looking character in all of Z. I mean, I'm just saying, like, ever since I was a kid in the heart of Dragon Ball Z's fandom, Back in the day, till now, every single girl 
from then to now, always loved Future Trunks because of how good looking he was. I'm just saying, and, and like, and that's not me trying to like hype him up. I'm just saying, like, fucking Christ. Every fucking girl I knew always loved Future Trunks. I don't know if any other guy ever had this feeling of like having a character who you loved and like girls liked it too, and then they, they that's how they become attracted to you. I fucking love Future Trunks because of that shit. I remember back in the day going to school and I had like folders. Of future trunks because I was that much of a nerd that I was always keeping my folders in like Dragon Ball Z folders because I'm just that much of an asshole. But I had one that was a cover of Future Trunks with a sword and like he's like on it's it's that poster that picture of like him on the ground and he has his sword in one hand and he's like looking up like a badass that that um picture really good po po uh, poster and uh, I had that as a folder and I remember going to um, computer class and. Um, uh, back in the day when computers were shitty and they were like really big boxes. They were basically a toaster back in those days. And uh, back when Apple pretty much was like really at that cusp of like making glass phones, they were right in that gap. I was in that gap and um, I went to computer class. I was holding that poster, uh, that folder rather. And before I got to sit down, like all the girls who saw the poster loved, uh, loved the folder because of how awesome looking Future Trunks was. And they always thought like, oh, he's so good looking. And that's how every other girl ever reacts to Future Trunks. From like then to even now. I think like every fangirl, uh, with the exception of like Boma and like Goku. And I guess the occasional Vegeta. Always cosplays as Future Trunks. For a specific reason. And that reason is because he's the go most good looking of the entire fran- Like, Future Trunks, he's the most good looking character of all of them. He's better looking- and then Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, Gohan, he's the best, look. he's the pretty boy of Dragon Ball Z. And I like that. I, I think that's a good to say. So, kudos to Robot Underdog for casting an actor who's incredibly good looking. I'm not really big on that because I'm like, like, oh, the fucking status quo, superficial castings. Bullshit. In this case, I'm going to accept it because Future Trunks has that quality about him and it works for him. So, kudos for them. Um... Once again, that's just based off looks. I'm giving him hype right now. Free hype. Just based off looks. We don't know. I don't know his acting performances quality is up to par, so we have to wait and see. Um, I heard his dialogue, so hopefully he can bring a lot more to the table other than just looking good look, have, um, having a good looking face. So we'll have to see, uh, wait and see. I also wish that um, the actor kind of like beefed up a little bit more. Because future, I mean, granted, this is young future trunks, so he's kind of like lean in comparison to his like super ultra trunks, like later in the cell game saga. So I guess it makes sense, but I, I just, I would have liked it if he like beefed up a little bit more, but whatever. It, it's not that big of a deal. Anyways, moving off the of robot underdog, let's transition into another YouTube company who's developing DBZ live action, which hopefully some other fucking big company does and good. K&K &K Productions, yes, they're back, and they're at it again, yes, they're fucking, uh, I think yesterday, or a couple days ago, uh, I can't recall, uh, essentially they made a, a new update discussing their web series, for those who don't know, K&K &K Productions, uh, was developing a Frieza Saga teaser trailer, kind of similar to their Saiyan Saga trailer, uh, which I relatively enjoyed, some people really didn't like it, and a lot of people felt like, like, Dragon Ball Z, uh, was awesome, but, um, it just doesn't translate good to live action, but, um, I liked it, it was pretty decent, and I liked their future stuff, like, Frieza Saga trailer, wasn't a big fan of it, I thought the look of Frieza didn't work, I think they just, they definitely needed a lot more, uh, going for them to, to really accomplish that, and then on top of that, um, they did the Go uh, Goku the GoPro, which was funny, I liked it, it was pretty decent, pretty entertaining, um, uh, very simple, but pretty entertaining, and then they were like, hey, uh, we're going to stop making these little videos and we're going to try and make a live action web series dedicated to Dragon Ball Z with hopeful um, backing with toy animation. So hopefully we can get the film, live action film rights to Dragon Ball Z to do this web series. That was their goal. And it was a very admirable goal. Admirable goal. I, I never really believed that they were going to accomplish that goal. I mean, like... Don't get me wrong, I, I really admired and really looked up to their goal to really do it because that's something that I've always dreamed about doing. Like just, you know, calling out toy animation and just being like, hey, 
We need to do this now. It's either now or never. We need to do this now. Let's do this. Fucking come on. Let's produce this shit. Let's develop this shit. DB live action DBZ right now. That's like something that I've been wanting to do for forever. You know, I've been wanting to do that forever, and they fucking did it. They fucking, they fucking went over, got into talks with Toy Animation, and I guess, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Toy Animation, uh, based off what they've been saying, which, of course, uh, isn't public knowledge, so I can't really fact it as true, but I'm going to just, I'm going to take it as, you know, as personal opinion. Um, Toy Animation has the film rights to DBZ. 20th Century Fox has the film rights to Dragon Ball. Toy Animation has no desire to do live action DVC. Why they have the rights if they don't want to do it beats the fuck out of me. I have fucking no clue, but whatever. I'll get into that later. Anyways, that being said, um, I hell, I might actually make a, a freaking solo video just discussing that. Another DBC discussion uh, before I go, just discussing the film rights of Dragon Ball Z. Anyways, um, that being said... Uh, to, uh, K and K were like, hey, we just wasted like a sh like fucking half a year, um, several months rather, discussing like, hey, we wanted to work with Toy Animation to work out some kind of deal where we can do like a web like an official web series in like in appreciation and celebration of Dragon Ball, and they don't want to do it. They don't want to be associated with live action Dragon Ball because they're fucking stupid. So you know what? We're just gonna go ahead and do it anyways. We're gonna do a fan made web series all our own and they're developing the pilot according to one of the founders and directors of of kdk essentially uh <clears throat> um they already have like a treatment or like a good several minute video uh montage i guess of what they've accomplished so far with their web series so yeah it's gonna be pretty interesting to see what they've accomplished overall but um at the end of the day um i i really appreciate k and k really trying to accomplish live action dbz i mean like 20th century fox bombed and flopped and like put their head in the sand when it came to dragon ball and to this day i still wish they would fucking get their head out of their ass and fucking try to attempt another dragon ball movie i mean like it's been practically almost a decade like half a decade rather let's see like Yeah, like, they, it's practically almost a decade since Dragon Ball Evolution, almost, not really, but almost, practically just several years up to a decade, and they have not even attempted to develop another one. Like, that baffles my mind. However, Toy Animation baffles me even more. Like, f like, like, is there, like, no possible way to make a deal with them to, like, really, like, hey, like, let's make a deal. Like, y you have the rights. You can do whatever you want. You can fucking do whatever you want with the anime. Like, but we're talking about films. We're not talking about the anime. Like, why can't we have, like, some kind of Marvel Fox thing going down? Like, you... Okay, you have the anime. We'll have the movies. Why can't we just do that? Like, it's really odd to me that that's, a, like, a... That's not happening. You know, I just wish they can just share the rights. And just, let's have live-action DBZ. Because I said this before... And I'll keep saying it, and I'll say it as loud and proud as possible. No matter what the haters say, whatever all the speculators say, no matter what any of the doubters say, I don't care. I'll continue to say it. I want to watch, I want to go to the theater, and I want to witness a live-action DBZ movie before I die. Before I leave this dimension, this world, and I teleport to another one. I need to see a Dragon Ball Z movie, a live-action DBZ movie. I've seen the anime movies. I've seen the specials. I've seen the cartoons. I've seen the manga. I've seen everything that Toy Animation could possibly do with their freaking franchise that they continuously milk. I've seen it. I've never seen live-action DBZ. Yeah, we got the Dragon Ball Evolution one, but, like, they destroyed whatever possibilities they had. They just flopped. They had no idea what they were doing. And it was just, they had a time slot, put it there. Boom. Let's just throw it out there. Shot in the dark. Once again, like I stated in the beginning of this episode, that we're in the superhero genre. We're in the business of making the superhero genre. We're in the golden age. 
Let's get this shit done. Let's fucking do this already. Let's put it out there. I mean, like, I, I give it, like, I think a good time slot for how long uh, a Dragon Ball Z movie, legitimate live-action movie, could be, like, in legitimacy of development, in, in my personal opinion, in, in filmmaking and technology history. I say every, uh, possibly post-2020. I think, like, once we reach 2020 and go onward to the next decade and century to, like, 2030 and onward... I think that's going to be the right time for developing a movie of Dragon Ball Z standards and with a budget and development and studio and writers and developers of actual current of like um <sighs> it's just I want that to happen. I I really do. I really want this to happen. And from what K and K have said, it's not like, toy animation, they have no desire. They just have zero t desire to do it, and that's really sad. And I think the only real people who really suffer is just the fans. The fans who really want it to happen, they're the ones who suffer. And that's, I guess, the saddest part. But overall, um, K, K Productions are working on a pilot for their web series, and that's fucking awesome. Um, once again, they're doing the Saint Saga, which I found funny. It's like... They already did a trailer, and now they're doing a, a web series. Like, what else are they going to do? Like, fucking, they're just going to, like, make cartoons dedicated to, like, spoof cartoons dedicated to Saints. Like, they just love that Saiyan saga. But, um, anyways, that being said, I really can't wait to see what happens with their web series. Um, the interesting th thing about it is that, um, when, when you watch the update, uh, when, um, the, uh, freak, the guy, I can't, I don't remember the guy's name, but one of the founders... Uh, and directors of K and K, he was discussing like how they've really improved over the last year and how they've really gone along. They've really come a long way, which I, I guess to a certain degree I will agree with. And how they've brought in so many new people who are at the best of their field in every single um, wave of like uh, production. And he was also discussing like the cast. And the interesting part about it is like, well, did they recast? their Saiyan Saga cast, that would be kind of interesting, like, because they were discussing, like, oh, we reached a new level, and we fucking, we, you know, we made improvements in every fucking standard, like, in whichever way it was, even in our Goku, it's like, oh, wow, did they freaking recast our Goku, like, that would be kind of interesting, like, no offense to the actor they had for Goku, but, um, I'd like to see what what the future is. Like, do they have the same Goku, or they just they recast it? It'll be really interesting. But overall, uh, K and K and Robot Underdog are like, even though Twenty Century Fox and Toy Animation have their heads up their asses and have no idea what they're doing, at least the fans do know what they're doing. And Robot Underdog and K and K Productions are killing it with their live action uh, fan made properties. So. Hopefully, the future is a little bit brighter with um, people realizing that, like, you know, anime and specifically Dragon Ball Z is important and relevant. I mean, like, if we've learned anything from, like, Battle of Gods to now, that the fan base in Dra of Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball Z fan base in America alone is huge. It's fucking relevant. It's serious. It's fucking gigantic. And it's strong. So... Let's see, let's hope that one day, like, one of these studios get their head out of their ass and start, like, fucking stop becoming these stupid, stuttering idiots and just fucking go out there and make a fucking good movie with people who love the property, like a Kevin Feige, like a fucking Disney Marvel Universe, and make a Dragon Ball Z Universe. Hell, maybe, like, an anime cinematic universe. Let's have, like, all these characters come together. Let's have Goku, Naruto, you know... You know, Yusuke, and let, let's have them team up and be like a, a, an Avengers. Well, guys, uh, seeing as how I've said my piece on Dragon Ball Z, Resurrection F, the Blu-ray, uh, Naruto the movie, a little bit of Ghost in a Show, and of course, Robot Underdog and KK Productions, Light of Hope series, and Saiyan Saga series, it's time to really end this episode with two last uh, segments on this uh, podcast, and that's, of course, my top five and comment, um, reply to comments, the comment section. Uh, top five worst DBZ Resurrection F moments. Uh, I made a part one 
on my top five segment on my channel, uh, dedicated to the best and most amazing things and moments out of Resurrection F. As you already have can tell, I love this movie, and there was a lot of things that I loved out of this movie. However, there were a lot of things that I did not like. That of course, that's where this top five comes in. So of course, remember, all my top so top fives are subjective. So of course, let me know in the comments what is your top five of the worst things. In Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F moments. And of course, if you're one of those uh, fans who are like, oh, there was nothing ever wrong with Dragon Ball, you know, Resurrection F, then of course, you can believe that. And I'm not going to discount it. I'm just going to say like, e okay, sure. Anyways, uh, moving on for that. Uh, the worst DBZ Resurrection F moments. These are my personal opinions, so you don't have to agree with me. Anyways, uh, starting up at number five, no Goten or Trunks. Uh, I love Goten and Trunks as characters. I just felt like it was really odd and weird that uh, nobody really decided to bring them on in this battle. Uh, I, I remember in the discussion of like right before they went to fight Frieza's army, uh, some characters were like, oh no, they couldn't show up. There wasn't enough time. Uh, oh, they couldn't show up. It's too dangerous for them. It's like, really? I think Gotenks is stronger than a Super Saiyan Gohan. I'm just saying, I think they could have done a lot. So... Uh, really weird that they didn't show up. I loved Mass Roshi and Tien doing their thing, but I would have been just as fine if they replaced them with Goten and Trunks. Just my opinion. Anyways, number four, Frieza as the main villain. As you know, if you've watched my review for the movie, I did have a big, uh, opinion and, um, uh, I had a real big, I guess, problem with Frieza being the main villain. Originally, I loved the idea. And I was like, oh my god, this is awesome. Frieza, Golden Frieza, yes. But then when you watch the movie, you're like, this is like Avengers Age of Ultron. Like, Ultron, even though he's cool and he's fucking interesting and, you know, he has cool powers and he, like, looks cool and he fucking, you know, he has a lot going for him, but he's not a real threat. And everything he does could have been t easily, you know, beaten, like, at the beginning of this movie. And that's how I feel about Frieza. And that's sad. Like, like, he, it's just like, Frieza just had no footing in this movie since the second he was resurrected. He just, he wasn't a threat. And even though he had amazing moments and Chris Aries destroyed performance-wise and all this other awesome stuff, I just feel like he just was not that big of a threat. My opinion, uh, that's just my opinion. Anyways, number three, go on being so weak. That was the big major discussion that I even made a topic video on about Gohan's importance, not only in this movie, but in the series. Um, but a lot of people have big problems with Gohan in this movie. And even though I'm not a hardcore Gohan hater, um, or even, you know, like uh, a big, you know, n even those kind of like purists who have like a big problem with Gohan not being as relevant, I just felt like... Gohan being so weak and him being so skinny and him being like really defeated so easily by Frieza, it really bothered me. And I think it bothered me more I wa the more I watched it. Like when I first saw it, I was like, okay, whatever. But then when I see it more and more, it's like, yeah, Gohan, mm, that's all I can really say. Anyways, moving on for that. Number two, uh, Goku kills Frieza. Granted. That was a long th time coming. Goku, he needed to do this to accomplish a new, um, a new format in his, you know, in his fucking, in the future of his development. He needed to do this. He needed to kill and he needed to defeat um, a character right out of the gate. That was his lesson. That's a lesson that Whis was teaching him. But after the whole Vegeta uh, Super Saiyan God mode, um, you know, accomplishment, you're like. Can't Vegeta just do it? Let Vegeta do it, please. But it didn't go that way. And of course, that was just a major thing I just did not like. Um, but of course, before I get to my number one pick, here are some honorable mentions that I just did not like out of Resurrection F. The dialogue. Um, I, even though I love the English dub, there were certain translations and certain, um, I guess, certain sequences where characters talk, and it just doesn't really make that much sense, and it's kind of weird. Uh, number two, unresolved lessons. Um, at the end of the day, Vegeta and Goku kind of learn their lessons, but not really. Uh, the lesson is, if you work together, you become the strongest characters in the entire universe, even more powerful than Beerus. Yet, they decide that, yeah, it's better that we stay separate. It's like, did you really learn anything? 
that's another problem I had. Um, inconsistencies, kind of like with Battle of Gods, just, you know, major story and character, you know, inconsistencies. Not a big deal, but it is, you know, just an honorable mention. Um, Frieza's foolishness. Uh, Frieza, if he wanted to be a bigger threat, like Goku and Vegeta stated in the fight, all he should have done was um, he should have trained longer and perfected his golden form. Because if he did, he would have been a major threat, but he wasn't. So, uh, yeah, and also I really didn't like that scene where he's like, Oh, Vegeta, join me, and like t you will be the highest ranking officer in my army. And it, all you have to do is kill Goku. Even though he could have done it himself in that moment, it's like, it's like, when did this movie become a James Bond movie? It's like, you're the villain, just do it already, come on, whatever. Um, Goku versus Vegeta. As much as I love their moments together, you know, going back and forth, it, it got kind of tiresome at times. Like, it's not a big deal, but it was a, it's a certain thing where it's like, like, why are they fighting each other? And there's like a certain point in time where like Vegeta just comes in, like punches Goku in the face and he's like, damn it, Kakarot. It's like, you were supposed to let me join in now. And they just start fighting for like two seconds. It's like... It's like, wow, they really don't care about the fucking villain in this movie. They care more about fighting each other than actually Frieza, which is really odd. It's funny, and it's entertaining, but it's like, eh. Anyways, and also on top of that, tights. Like, wasn't why wasn't tights in this movie? Jocko referenced her. Why couldn't, he, why couldn't she be in this movie? That's all I really had to say. But moving off of that, these are just honorable mentions, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. But moving off of that, the number one thing I just downright despised out of this movie fucking sorbet or Togo i don't even remember his fucking name i don't care about the character one of those frieza servants the death ring freaking annoyed the crap out of me i just okay you fucking you want to bring back frieza sure whatever your your intentions don't make any sense but whatever you want to do it go ahead sure why not however What's with that death ring? Like, how is it possible that that death ring has so much energy inside of it that it just blew a hole right through free, like Goku's chest, right through his heart, just blew a hole right through him? Like, how is that possible? I have no idea how that little ring has that much energy to do that. And Goku, in his god form for no less. I'm just saying, like, I, I, know, that, I know that that scene had a purpose. I know it had a purpose. It was supposed to sh foreshadow Goku's, uh, you know, good-heartedness, uh, letting his guard down, being too cocky, not defeating the character, the villain, or the opponent uh, as quickly as possible. That was his main lesson. That was a lesson that Whis was teaching him, and he failed. And I understand that. That's where the scene comes in, and it has a purpose. I fully comprehend that. However, really, the death ring, the death ring that can just shoot... Like a common laser right through Goku's chest as a god. Really annoyed the crap out of me. It made no sense. It was stupid. I mean, who knows? Maybe that death ring is like super powerful. We don't know. Who the heck knows? I don't know. However, it just annoyed the crap out of me and I don't like it. And I wish it was not in this movie. However... That's just my personal list of the top five things I just did not like out of Resurrection F. Still a good fucking movie that I love to death. However, those are certain things that I just didn't like out of this movie, and I'm pretty sure I'll find more things I don't like once the Blu-ray comes, but overall, that will not change my opinion of the movie as it stands. Um, it's still a solid 8, you know, 8 or 9 out of 10. It's still a good, solid, badass, epic movie, and I can't wait to, to buy it. So, anyways, moving on for that, let's end this episode with the comment section of my podcast, my favorite pod, uh, part of the podcast, where I sit down and discuss your comments. All right, uh, let's get a drink of water before this shit gets into a shitstorm. <clears throat> Anyways, moving off of that, comments. Uh, first comment for Goku vs Superman. And now the screw attards are on the patrol, looking to crush all dis uh, dissent Ben and Chad's so-called authority. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about, so I don't know how to reply to you. However, I will say that uh, the Queen, uh, Delicious, whatever, how you say that word, I have no clue. I'm sorry. I've been talking for far too long. I have a, tons of other things to do in the day. My head hurts. I'm sorry. I have no, I have, I don't know how to pronounce words. I'm illiterate and I'm done. I'm dumb. I'm ignorant. 
forgive me. However, you put me in a list of, um, not a list, but in a group, a Google group, so kudos to you. That's all I can really say. I have no idea what you mean by your by your reply, but uh, I guess the screw retards or screw fan, just leave the DBZ fans alone, please. Can we just, can we all just get along? I know that's cliche to say, but... I'm just too tired to really give a crap about the screw attack and their fan base and like the Goku versus Superman hate. I just, I have no energy to really care anymore. I just don't. I said my piece on the podcast, in my rant, in my videos. I said my piece. I don't care anymore. Goku versus Superman, they shouldn't be fighting. They should be making out and having sex. That's what they should be doing. I want to see a Goku versus, uh, versus Superman gay porno. That's what I want to see. Anyways, <laughs> I don't know how that transition. I'm just saying, like, it's just ridiculous. Goku versus Superman. Why are they fighting? Like, I, I had this discussion with Paul, who is not even a Dragon Ball Z fan, but he was he, even he was like, "Why are they fighting? Like, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Like, why are they why are they fighting? It makes no sense." But um, whatever. Hopefully, they everybody can just um you know make up and kiss. Anyways, Dragon Ball minus comment. The original Bardock movie never was considered canon in the first place, just like the anime filler. As far as Son Goku being three when he was sent to Earth, I was I always thought of him as being younger too. But a three-year-old still would not have a great understanding of his race or history. Those kinds of concepts start to form around the age of five. That's why we don't start school until that age. Plus, Goku hits his head when he arrives on Earth, and he depicted as ignorant uh, simpleton through the entire series. Well, I understand what you're going with. Once again, the purist, I, like I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, is like, oh, Bardock is not considered canon. It's like, does it really matter? Like, my, Dragon Ball Minus and Episode of Bardock are fucking inferior in comparison to Bardock, the father of Goku movie. Like, that movie. Hell, I even made a review on it, if you've not seen it. Um, I did a, a throwback uh, review to Epi uh, Bardock, the father of Goku, TV special movie. Solid movie. Fucking amazing. Eh, the f Not canon. Who cares? It's better than the than the actual canon. That's all I'm going to say. Um, yeah, Goku being younger uh, and older in the, in, the, in the fucking minus doesn't make any sense. Um... Then again, it doesn't really, if I'm not mistaken, they don't really, Toriyama doesn't really flat out say, like, what his age is, so I don't really know, but based off his age, he does look like he has relevance of what's going on, like, he's, like, he's walking around, like, there's that, there's actually that cover of, like, Goku, like, standing upright, like, with his family, and, like, a young Raditz, and, like, Jinye and Bardock, and then when, like, he's in the spaceship, he's, like, He's old. He's holding on to the to the to the fucking pod, and he's like staring at his parents. He's like, "Why? What are you doing? Why do I have to leave?" So I feel like he has a grasp of what's going on. So that's why it just doesn't make any sense. However, uh, Bardock the movie is better than the fucking actual canon. So regardless of it's canon or not, it's better. Anyways, uh, moving off of that. Um uh, DBZ discussion, Vegeta Super Saiyan 3 topic, uh, I would like to see Vegeta go Super Saiyan 3, especially since Episode 7 is the only best time for him to achieve that form in that series, even if his new transformation will be short-lived. Well, I fully agree, um, Episode 7, a lot of people are speculating that Vegeta will become Super Saiyan 3, uh, there's no evidence to prove that until we see it, uh, the, as I'm recording this, this is, uh, the 21st of August, which is Friday. And uh, we will not be able to tell if that will happen until Sunday or Monday, uh, 23rd or 24th. So it's it's going to be hard, but um, I, I can't wait to see it because episode 6 of Dragon Ball Super was phenomenal. I loved it. Um, will Vegeta become Super Saiyan 3? I'd like to see it. I don't know if it will happen, but I'd like to see it. Um, that's all I really can say. Uh, uh, another comment, similar comment on the same video. Uh, hell yeah, I think Vegeta is going to turn Super Saiyan 3 on Episode 7, and once again, like I told you, that would be cool. I don't know if it's going to happen, but that would be really cool. Uh, moving on for that, another Goku vs. Superman comment. The match was horrible, even at the ending, but still, the animation was cool. Well, um, I guess. Uh, the, the match was terrible, I did not like it. I know a lot of people loved it, but I didn't. 
And, uh, hell, even the animation was, like, whatever to me. So, I know a lot of people who even despise the match, who like both characters respectfully. Even they were like, oh, the animation was good. I'm not one of those guys. I, I, I personally felt the animation was whatever to me. That's just me. You don't, you don't have to... It's a subjective opinion. You don't have to agree with me, but that's just my opinion. I, I, I didn't like the fight overall. Like, the the speculation, the fight itself, the animation, everything about it, I just did not like. It was just not a good match. It was just not a good rematch. The first fight was superior. I didn't even like that one, but I like it ten times more than the rematch. It's just, it is what it is. Anyways, uh, Broly versus Hulk. And he, this is a three-part comment, so I'm just going to read it all at once. Ugh, and it's a doozy. Uh, this is the shittiest explanation ever. Broly is nowhere as strong as the Hulk, who has taken blows that can destroy galaxies. Hulk is not a grappler. He is more of a striker. Broly would shit himself when, him, when Hulk goes in a world br breaker form. He caused natural disasters with um, every footstep, destroyed a meter twice the size of a planet with one punch, in his weakest form and survive supernovas without healing a uh, broly just can't even be in the sun it took the the power of 1 million exploding suns to turn hulk to to human form a key blast is nothing hulk can just punch him into the sun and for proof he punched the platform so hard it sent a giant windigo and by um, by beast who uh, 100s of times bigger than him. Broly is dead, and Hulk kills every laughable clone of Broly. Plus, nothing you said about Hulk was correct, and it is obvious that you prefer Dragon Ball Z characters, and he can survive in space and the sun and underwater. Keep talking rubbish. Well, first off, I'm not discounting Hulk's abilities. I like the Hulk. Now, you stated, I obviously prefer Dragon Ball Z characters. Obviously! It's no secret. I, I always find it weird when someone tries to discount it, like if it's like some kind of hidden secret, like, oh, you only say that because you prefer those characters, but you don't want to admit it. It's like, of course I admit it. I love Dragon Ball Z characters more than other characters. That's just the fact. But it doesn't mean that I'm discounting other characters. Like, if you go back and watch, like, every DBZ character that's been in my Who'd, Min Who'd Win series... There's only been a couple who've won, who have actually won, which is Broly and Gohan. Every other character I've used for DBZ purposes have lost. You know, like, for instance, greatest example I can pick is Piccolo versus Martian Manhunter. Piccolo, I love the character. I love Piccolo to death, but I personally think Martian Manhunter would beat him in a fight, and I said that. So I don't really think it really comes into question my uh, who I'd rather prefer. Like, it doesn't really matter. So, whatever. Uh, at the end of the day, you don't have to believe me. It's just a subjective opinion as always. I always say this in all of the videos. It's like, my opinion doesn't matter. The point of the video is to get across who do you think would win. That's the purpose of the fight. If I say something that's stupid, that's on me. That's on me, and I'll take the heat. I'll take it. I'll take the hits. But it doesn't change my mind. And Broly, I just think, would beat Hulk. That's just my opinion. I think he would beat the Hulk. Hulk is an awesome character who I think would definitely give Broly um, a run for his money. But I'm full on Broly, so that's just me. Um, so moving off of that, another hateful comment towards my top 5 overrated uh, anime character video. Stupid wanker, no one cares. Well, I don't think no one cares, seeing as how that was a requested top 5. So, I guess somebody cared. Um... Goku vs. Superman, you're right about one thing. They didn't need to do a rematch. Soup's already won, but I am glad they did. It was a good match, and the animation was awesome. Well, um, I'm glad you liked it. I didn't, and I don't really agree with your opinion, but that's just me. Um, glad you liked it. Uh, top 5 you know, moments of Resurrection F video. Uh, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Vegeta vs. Golden Frieza, and Goku vs. Whis Training. Okay, that's cool. Uh, same video comments. Uh, my top five moments. Uh, Goku powering up to Super Saiyan God form, number one. Number two, Goku going back in time to do his Kamehameha. Uh, number three, Goku versus Frieza. Number four, Goku Vegeta sparring with Whis. And number five, the Z Fighters fighting Frieza's army. Yeah, 
pretty awesome list. Really like it. Uh, same video, same uh, commenter. Vegeta and Goku, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Transformations. Yep, pretty awesome moment. Really liked it. Uh, I'm actually not lying. Those are pretty awesome moments. Uh, moving on for that, some super comments. Dragon Ball Super comments. Let's see what's that all about. It was hilarious when Vegeta got so scared that he jumped in the ocean and throws an octopus in the air and started cooking, which is priceless. And my favorite funny moment <clears throat> in the episode is when Krillin is burning up from the spicy food. I look forward to next week's episode. I do too. Episode 6, like I stated, so fucking good. Such a good episode. I loved it. Totally agree with you. Um, same same video comment. Uh, cool, same here. I think Vegeta is going to turn Super Saiyan 3 in Episode 7. Once again, I told you. I like the idea, just don't know if it's going to happen. I just don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> Alright, moving off of that. Let's see some Bardock videos. Those are always priceless, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just saying, God. I'm just saying, uh, uh, people. I just, I'm saying, just saying. I like the idea that I get so much comments on a specific video, but can you please comment on another DBZ video I've done? I'm just saying, like, there's so many Bardock comments out there that I get almost weekly, almost daily, of just straight up Bardock comments, and they're all like paragraph long. It's like, oh my god, I've heard so much Bardock, I've, I've read pretty much everyone's thoughts on Bardock for like uh, over a year, it's, it's very like, I almost feel ashamed of myself for making that topic, because it's like, oh my god, I never knew there would be so many people who would speculate something that was just a one-off that I made, like, I, I didn't even think it was that important, like, Bardock, like, who cares, but then everybody was like, eh, you know, whatever, anyways, Let's try to run right through these really quickly. <clears throat> okay, and there's like four comments in a row, and let's see. Um, hmm. uh, I guess, yeah, let me just run through these really quickly. I have a ton more comments to go by, so let's get this really quickly. Uh, shit, your cannon asses don't sheesh aside from GT. If the movies were... Uh, oh my god, the cannon... The cannon purists, they're attacking. They're coming, they're attacking. Uh, if the movies were never made to explain the huge-ass plot holes in DBZ of who, what, where, when, and why, we would all be confused and make up our own stories just to satisfy ourselves from the huge plot holes in the story, so be grateful the movies even came out to actually give everyone a logical story that could be very likely to happen. Broly isn't the first Super Saiyan, neither. He and Goku was born same year. He wouldn't be the Super Saiyan Great Ape, neither, since that has... That was long time ago before he was even born. If Bardock did go back in time, there is no certain clear amount of time he was sent back. Now, it's very possible Whis is likely the reason since he is the god of time. Which, I don't know. Okay, whatever. Uh, this, I was like, uh, uh, you know what, let's just stop right there. Is Whis the god of time? He has the ability to go back in time, but it's never really clearly stated that he's a specific god of something. So I don't I don't know. Um, anyways, um, the story of Dragon Ball Super is getting into. It's like Toriyama is thinking something along those lines, but if not, who knows what he is going to do with the story? Would be interesting if his father was still alive somehow, and they end up fighting. After all, there are thirteen gods, including Beerus. Yeah. Um, uh, so, okay, second comment. So, true, three different people, Bardock was first Super Saiyan due to Vegeta and Frieza, uh, because that's the knowledge they had at the time, but then, how can be he be the first because there was Super Saiyan God before that, lol, lol, we know Broly is the legend, but the, the one who has been called legend that Frieza is scared of was Bardock, because that's the knowledge they had at the time, but I agree, three different people, so silly, we know Bardock became the Super Saiyan so far behind time before the legend, aka Broly, was even born, I find it funny, I don't, I don't even remember discussing Broly in that topic, but they keep bringing it up, like, there's a difference between becoming the legendary, the legendary Super Saiyan form, and then being the Super Saiyan, they're two completely different transformations, so... 
anyways, um, Broly was even born. But then they say, well, Brodog, uh, Bardog obtained uh, the Super Saiyan uh, so far back in time. Then there was a Super Saiyan God if it was only Bardock back then. Okay, third comment. People are dumb. What is there not to understand? Bardock was not killed, but back in time, which of course is not canon, sorry. Uh, and then killed Lord Chill, who is not a canon character. Frieza's ancestor, who says warn Frieza of the Super Saiyan legend. Not the legendary Super Saiyan, a.k.a. Uh, Broly, who was baby uh, at that stage. And then Bardock is in the past, so Broly isn't even born yet. Bardock was the first Super Saiyan, not legendary Super Saiyan. Heck, we don't know how much more fighting and training Bardock did after obtaining Super Saiyan. And so quickly, Broly is the legendary Super Saiyan, but Bardock was the first. Oh, God, that was a lot. So, there's a lot to discuss there. First comment. Um, we... I don't. I already said my piece on. I don't even know what the how to reply to you. I just. It just doesn't make any sense. That's all I can really say. Number two comment. Um, Bardock, Broly, and Super Saiyan God characters are three complete different characters. I agree with you. They are three complete different characters and three different completely different timelines. Bardock. Episode of Bardock, let's let's just get it out there. Episode of Bardock is not a good special. It's not that great. It's it's cool. It's funny. It's entertaining, but it's not it's not the greatest and it's not good. It's not the best. Um whether whether or not it really matters if it's canon or not doesn't even matter. It just what matters is e either it's good or it's not good. And episode of Bardock, like I, I guess I have to watch it again, but it's just not that great. It's okay. Don't get me wrong, it's okay. And I like it because, you know, I'm a hardcore DBZ fanboy, but, yeah, it's just, it's not the greatest, so that's all I can really say. Um, and, yeah, and on your last comment, um, everything you just said is a what if and just speculation, so I can't really speculate on it. Uh, moving off of that, another comment, Goku and Vegeta both came from evil bloodlines. Yes, correct, definitely. Um, Goku vs. Superman, uh, no worries, buddy, in a year or two, they will make another one and make Goku win just to make Goku fans happy, lol. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's probably never going to happen because, yeah, it's screw attack. Of course, you're not going to let fucking Goku win. Come on, let's let's be realistic here. Anyways, moving off of that, uh, on my Resurrection F review video, I finally got to see the movie on the 11th, uh, despite the hassle I went through. Uh, I love that movie better than Battle of Gods. Jocko is hilarious. I am glad that Goku finished off Frieza out of nowhere to prevent Frieza from destroying the planet again. I love that 18 said he's so cool. Uh, so cool. Uh, it was funny when Vegeta said cheese. Also, it was nice to finally see Goku and Vegeta fight each other on the big screen, even though it was brief. Uh, I love the fight scenes. Uh, definitely awesome. Um, obviously, this is a comment from my subscriber, Nahum Dyer. Who, I actually watched your video when you were discussing that you couldn't go and see the movie the day of release. So, I was I was really feeling for you, dude. Because that was kind of fucked up how you weren't able to see the movie. But, um, uh, good for you that you finally got to see it. And I also got to see the English dub. So, I guess kudos to the both of us. Anyways, moving off of that. Uh, on my top 5 DBZ female characters. Teen slash young adult Boma. Boma. Uh, was so hot, but she's still hot later because she got big boobs. I totally understand Roshi. I guess so. Um, Boma, yeah, that's actually kind of true. Boma, the older she gets, the hotter she got. Uh, I think the only time she ever looked not hot is her GT. Like, GT is when she just looked like a straight-up old lady. Uh, yeah, but then again, all the chicks in that, that fucking series were not that great. Hell, even Pan. And she was the number one character that had so much freaking screen time and had so much you know fucking she had the ability to fucking tr be something but she never really amounted to that so yeah boma she's fucking awesome she's definitely one of my faves and she's she is pretty hot and i have to give it to her she fucking she stays hot all the time i don't know how she does it she's she like at this point in time she's like in her 40s or 50s and she still looks like she's like 18 i don't know how she does it anyways um more Goku vs. Superman fights. Uh, I enjoyed it, and he has a point. Quit hating. Well, I'm going to continue to hate because, hell, it's the internet. Um, and second, I understand they had a point. I just don't really care about it at the end of the day. Uh, number two, uh, you, mad, you mad, bro? Hope your ball cancer is, isn't fatal. Well, my balls are all right. 
for the meantime, until they make a part three. Uh, DBZ discussion. Yes, yes, he does. Uh, of course, he's discussing the fact, does Go Gohan suck? And apparently he agrees that he does suck. Uh, I personally love Gohan. I love Gohan. I think he's awesome. But, um, yeah. Apparently, the verdict is out. Fans think he sucks. Um, moving on for that, another Goku vs. Superman fight video, uh, comment, uh, why purple, question mark, I have no idea what you mean, can you please clarify in the comments section below, what do you mean by what is purple, are you addressing that to me, or something I said, let me know, uh, Dragon Ball Super Episode 5, uh, review comment, um, I love that episode despite some of its flaws. That fight sequence should have been in Battle of Gods. Toy animation should take more of their time to improve the animations instead of rushing the episodes uh, too quick. I think they should redo that episode to fix the animation uh, that the fans hate. I hate how money is the source of people's motivation to do good deeds for others and to create things. Well, you pretty much said it all there. I mean, like... Toy, toy animation fucked up when it came to episode 5 they they royally fucked up there, there's no redemption for that but hell episode 6 completely redeemed them and it was awesome uh, top 5 DBZ movies list uh, this is a very nice list thank you very much and uh, a whole bunch of other comments from God Emperor of Mankind and I'm going to say this once and for all Emperor Man, God of Emperor of Mankind you've been subscribed to me you've commented on my videos you've given me constructive criticism hell you've even bashed me but the time has come for me to finally say this and i'm going to say this out loud and publicly so take it as you will if i ever see you in person leave me alone don't talk to don't try to address just stay away from me because every time you comment and say something negative towards me i just want to drive my fist into your face and hell i've taken some heat and I've taken some hate comments and most of them are ridiculous but yours take it to an entirely other level like it like it's just crazy how insane how how you just get with your comments so at the end of the day all I can really say is that you know whatever you try to do with your life go ahead do whatever you want whatever um whatever you want to do with your youtube go do it whatever but um just stay away from me um if you don't like my videos don't watch them if you don't want to stay subscribed to me don't stay subscribed to me screw off but um yeah i just i don't respect you i don't like your videos i don't think you have a purpose or a point on youtube and at the end of the day every time you speak i just want to hurt you so please, don't comment on my videos or watch them ever again. And hopefully, you can be more respectful and more positive in the future. Anyways, moving off of that, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm done with a whole bunch of comments. I pretty much have said my piece on most of these comments, and I can't wait to see some more. Anyways, I've talked... Way too much. I think it's pretty much like we're at two hours in this podcast talking all about Dragon Ball Z and anime. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, I hope I didn't offend or bash or hopefully didn't hurt anybody's feelings. But then again, this is my personal podcast. I have to get you know, full on honest and personal with you guys and girls. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Personally, um, th this has just been my subjective opinion. So anything that's been uh, discussed in this episode, you don't have to share. But let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already. And of course, check out my other Dry Z videos on my channel. And of course, check out uh, and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John12. I hope you guys enjoyed the Super Saiyan, uh, Super Saiyan the Super Kyle Ken podcast. I will be back hopefully uh, in two weeks uh, in next month uh, with some more episodes of the Super Kyle Ken and John Chua Effect, so please be on the lookout for that. I'll be back in a month. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This has been the Super Kyle Ken podcast.